Aeonium aka Tree House League is a popular genus of about 35 succulent plants that are grown in gardens and succulent collections all over the world. While some grow quite small, the most popular varieties such as Aeonium arboreum here can quickly take over, especially when planted in the ground. When the conditions are right, this pretty succulent can grow to over 1.6 meters or 5 feet in height and width. In small gardens, this may mean Aeonium grow over smaller plants, starving them of sunlight and, as a result, inhibiting growth. Because of this, Aeonium may need to be trimmed and cut back when it starts taking over. In this video, we'll have a look at how to best prune Aeonium succulents, what will happen after pruning and how you can make more by replanting the trimmed bits. The first thing to know about pruning Aeonium is to chop whole rosettes and not cut leaves. If leaves are cut halfway through, they'll end up drying and browning around the cut point, looking a bit ugly. Let's prune this Aeonium arboreum as it's gotten a bit too tall, casting shade on the plants behind it. You can cut anywhere along the stem depending on the height you want to achieve. I'm going to go down the middle and continue cutting all of the rosettes that grow high. To get a nice rounded and bushy look, I'm cutting all of them at approximately the same height. There's one tall branch I'll leave alone as it's flowering and attracting bees. I'll give it a chop when the flowers have died off. After 2-3 to three weeks, you should start seeing new growth just like this around the stump. I've pruned this arboreum a few weeks back and the new offshoots are already growing well. In this instance, I wanted the Aeonium to be tall rather than wide, so I pruned branches that were growing too much to the sides. Basically, you can prune to any shape you like, just make sure there are some rosettes left. If all rosettes are chopped down, leaving just bare branches, the whole plant may die. The leaves process sunlight into growing energy and if there are none, the bare branches may not have enough processing power to stay alive. If the plant consists of just a single rosette, you may want to wait until it naturally grows offshoots before you trim or fix the leggy growth in two ways. The first method is to trim so there are a few leaves left on the stalk. This will force the plant to grow offshoots a bit faster and make it bushier. This rosette can be planted elsewhere and once the offshoots grow a bit bigger, you can get rid of the long leaves that were left behind on the stalk. Another alternative, if the Aeonium is too tall and a bit leggy, is to just sacrifice the plant and take a cutting of the head. This Aeonium Big Band is a great example. It's growing a little too tall with no offshoot, so I'll just cut it halfway. Then I'll leave the cutting to dry its wound, as this will minimize any harmful bacteria or fungus to get into the plant. This Aeonium Mardi Gras grew too leggy as well and I've cut it off a couple of days ago. The wound is now dry and the little cutting is ready to be planted. Simply pop it in a pot filled with succulent potting mix and push into your desired height. Many Aeonium naturally grow upwards a bit so you may need to do this every other year if you prefer the stem short. After pruning, the branches that were chopped off can be replanted to grow more and it's super easy. I quite literally have dozens of Aeoniums all around my garden and have recently had to start throwing them in the compost. Aeonium can be a bit weedy so when planting, do make sure your local area does not have them listed as environmental weeds. If you'd like to make your existing Aeonium look a bit more bushy, you can plant the offcuts close to the original plant, which is what I've done here. 
I kind of made a little bushy Aeonian patch just by planting the prunings close together. Aeonium are typically easy to propagate and you can shove cuttings straight into the ground. Let's give it a go together. This Aeonium is a little too tall and I want to make it look like there are more rosettes growing at the bottom. First I want to make sure that the new cuttings will be able to grow roots well and establish. The best way to help them out is to break up the soil. You can even mix in a bit of potting mix. When the soil around is hard, fresh roots may have trouble breaking through and as a result, the cuttings may not grow too well. The cuttings should start growing roots in 2-3 weeks. This should only be done during Aeonium's growing season as otherwise the cuttings may have a difficult time to grow. We're going to be talking about the growing season next. The cuttings should be watered if the weather is dry at least once per week until they start growing roots. Unlike most other succulents, Aeonium grow and propagate best during the cooler months. But the best time to prune can differ based on where in the world you are and how cold the winter months get. For instance, if like me you live in Australia and don't get much frost and snow, Aeonium can be pruned from end of autumn to mid spring. But because Aeonium is not very frost hardy, pruning may need to be limited to early autumn and spring in climates with regular frost and snow. Aeonium planted in the garden responds to pruning better than potted plants as they have lots of root space that will allow for more growth. When pruning potted Aeonium for more bushy growth, it may be best to repot into bigger pot or fertilize so the plant has enough energy to grow new offshoots. If you're pruning potted Aeonium to reduce size and do not want any extra growth, repotting may not be necessary. Watch out for aphids as these little pests love this plant and are very prolific once Aeonium start to grow new leaves. And finally, Aeonium are monocarpic, which means that the rosettes producing flowers will die. Flower stalks can be pruned and cut off to encourage new growth. I tend to leave them for the bees and prune once the flowers turn to seed pods. And that is all for today. I hope this video was useful and if you'd like to add anything or ask a question, you can leave a comment below. If you'd like to learn more about succulents, you can hit the subscribe button or go to our website succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.